This is the first lesson of the drug math tutorial for emergency clinicians. Uh, this is for your EMS providers, uh, emergency medicine providers, and critical care providers. And this is going to really go over a very simple technique for doing medication calculations. Drug math is a very important uh, thing. It doesn't really get its due diligence in the uh, education arena. It's often breezed over in school and there's a whole lot of medication errors happening pre-hospitally and, and in the hospital and hopefully this will uh, be a good enough tutorial to keep you from making those errors in the future. So let's get started. In this lesson we're going to talk about the conversion of different types of weights. Uh, the first one I would like to talk about is grams, converting grams. It's very important to be able to do this because most of your medications are going to come in the form of grams. Uh, sometimes you'll see them in, in milli equivalent or something else like that and for the most part if you can think about the prefixes for instance a milli equivalent is very similar to saying a milligram when you're converting the different uh, measurements of weight so the gram okay the first thing to remember is that one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams that's where milli comes from it's saying it's a thousand uh, grams one milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. That's going to be probably one of the most important conversions to remember. Yes, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. You won't do that a whole lot. Uh, you won't convert grams into milligrams a whole lot, but you will be converting milligrams into micrograms. So it's important to remember that conversion. Okay, so one milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. So let's put that to use. Whenever you're converting milligrams to micrograms, we said that one milligram is a thousand micrograms. So let's just write that up here on the top. One milligram is equal to one thousand micrograms. Okay, so you can use your intuition and say, well, we could just take 400 milligrams. If we multiply that by a thousand, we'll get our micrograms, right? 400,000 micrograms. Okay, and that's kind of easy to do. You could also remember it another way. If you're going from milligrams to micrograms, just remember to move the decimal point to the right three times. I'll show you what I mean. So if you took the 400 and we want to convert milligrams to micrograms, you take the invisible decimal point right here and you move it to the right three times. Okay, and then just put zeros in and again you get 400,000. So 400, 400 milligrams is equal to 400,000 micrograms. I wrote 400 micrograms down here, just realized it. That would be 400,000 micrograms. Okay? Very simple. If you're going the other way, if you're going from uh, micrograms into milligrams, you're going to need to move the decimal point the other way. So if we had four micrograms, we would take that invisible decimal point we would move it to the left three times and we would fill in the zeros and you would get 0 .004 milligrams so four micrograms equals 0 .004 milligrams okay it's four, four thousandths of a milligram okay now let's talk about converting pounds into kilograms. And this is very important because all of your weight-based dosages are going to be per kilogram. You might see a dose uh, 0.25 milligrams per kilogram. And you can't just plug pounds in there because it's not going to work out. It's going to be a different dosage. You've got to be able to convert the patient's pounds into kilograms. All right. And it's important to remember this basic component that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So for every 2.2 pounds you have, you have one kilogram. If you had, for instance, a scale here, let's draw a quick little scale, and you put a big ball on this side that weighed one kilogram, and a big ball on this side that weighed 2.2 pounds, it would be level. This scale would be level because they're equal to each other. The weight is the same, it's just a different way of saying it. All right. In Europe, they use kilograms a lot. Here in the States, we say pounds. So you got to be able to convert it. So we said that every kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So if you want to convert 110 pounds into kilograms, 
you would just divide by 2.2. 110 divided by 2.2. Now, decimals seem to confuse people, so I like to get rid of it and just say 110 divided by 22. 110 divided by 22 is equal to 5. Now, since we removed that decimal, it's important to remember that, and all you would do is add a decimal spot. You would just move it over, and you'd have 50, and that's your answer. 110 pounds is equal to 50 kilograms. Okay, that's kind of easy, but there's a be better way, or an easier way, I should say. When you're doing this in an emergent situation, you don't want to think about all this 2.2 math in your head, and not every number divides by 22 is easy as 110. But usually we can cut numbers in half pretty well. So if you took your patient's weight in pounds and you divided it by two, if you cut it in half, all right, whatever your result is, if you just subtract the first number from that, you're going to get the patient's weight in kilograms are pretty darn close, about one kilogram off sometimes. And it's really not that important if you're a kilogram or two off because if you think about it, drug math for the most part is an estimate. You're starting off with an estimate. You're, if your patient's unresponsive, you don't know what their exact weight is necessarily, so you're going to be estimating their body weight. And a lot of people don't even know their estimated body weight or they lie about it, and you're going to be starting with an estimate there. It does become very important when you're dealing with a, a small child. You want to give a pretty exact dosage there. But you can use the different tools that are out there, such as the Braslow tape, to kind of get a good rough estimate of what sort of drug dose you should be giving those patients. So let's do an example here. Um, first off, I want you to read this. It says, if you end up with a two-digit number, you're going to subtract the first digit. And here's an example. If we took 110, let me use a different color, actually. If you took 110 and you divided that by 2, okay, if we divided that by 2, it would equal 55. So we have two digits, and you're going to subtract the first digit, which is 5. 55 minus 5 is equal to 50. And as we did before, you could see 110 pounds is equal to 50 kilograms. Now, if you, if you ended with three digits, let's do another one. 200 divided by 2 is equal to 100. 200 divided by 2 equals 100. Okay. Now, you're going to subtract the first two digits if you have a three-digit result. So you can subtract the first two numbers. 100 divided by 10 instead of 1 is equal to 90. So 200 pounds is about 90 kilograms. Okay, so it's a very easy method. And I just kind of explained it here again. Uh, 176 pounds in the kilograms. So you take 176, you divide it by 2, you get 88. 88, since 8, to 8 is the first number, you do 88 minus 8, and you get 80 kilograms. All right, so 176 pounds is equal to 80 kilograms. And let's double check that and see if we're right. 176 divided by 2.2, again, I like to get rid of that decimal point to start out. So 176 divided by 22 is equal to 8. You could check that on your calculators if you want. Now we have to add that decimal spot again, put that zero in there, and we get 80 kilograms. All right, so that's it for now for lesson one. Uh, that's gonna, you got to practice that a whole lot before moving on. As we start getting into the other uh, drug calculations, you're going to see why it's important to be able to convert the patient's weight pretty quickly and be pretty good at it. So practice doing that over and over again. You should memorize a few of these. Every 22 pounds you go up, you go up by 10 kilograms. For instance, 110 pounds is equal to 50 kilograms. 132 pounds, since I'm adding 22, is equal to 60 kilograms. 156 is 70 kilograms. 178 is 80 kilograms, and so on and so forth. You should know those, at least basic weights, before you move on. Um, as you start doing this more and more, it'll help you to get a rough estimate when you see a weight such as 170 pounds. If you know 176 pounds is 80 kilograms, you know 170 is just a little bit less than that. Okay, so being able to understand some of the uh, even numbers, so to speak, will help you to make sure your drug math is correct as you move along. Okay, I'll see you in lesson two.